This re 180 topic is made possible by a grant from Kellogg's Rice Krispies, who reminds you books are totally overflowing with cool stuff. Get in on it. Wake up to the amazing world of reading. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. I'll never forget the day I hit the jackpot. Piles of money were pouring out of this machine and, and lights were flashing and, and bells were ringing. That bell was my alarm clock because I was dreaming. <laughs> Let's face it, most people don't get rich quick. To make major money, you have to work hard or be incredibly lucky. Tammy is here to show you how some people win big and lose big in the pursuit of big money. Ty, that little dream of yours is why millions of people go to Las Vegas, the gambling capital of the world. But is a casino a good bet for making big money? Keep dreaming, because the odds are against you. You're probably better off just taking in a few shows. You'll see what I mean. Bright Lights of Vegas. Welcome to Las Vegas, land of limos, high rollers, and hotels that offer anything you want, including a tropical rainforest. The 10 largest hotels in the United States are here. This one alone costs nearly half a billion to build. So who's financing this big spending? Gamblers. Nationwide, we spend more on gambling each year, about $700 billion, than we spend on all other entertainment combined, including movies and music, theme parks, and sporting events. And casinos are making big bucks because if you're playing, you're losing. And their goal is to keep you playing. You'll never find a clock in a casino and bright lights turn night into day, so you can lose track of time. They entice you with comfortable sights and welcome sounds. This metal tray makes it sound like you're making money, right? Nope, you're losing. According to Nevada law, slot machines can be programmed to keep 25% of what's put in. But we try to kid ourselves. I think that once you're playing and you win a little bit, you, you just know that you could get a little bit more. That's one of the reasons gambling can be addictive. That was like a junkie needing a fix. Yeah, I'd steal money and do whatever I had to do to get money to go back and try and win. So, when you visit Vegas, you can be entertained, but the odds are you'll never come home a winner. Oh, no! I've always thought making money by investing it was a pretty safe bet. But did you ever notice how people freak out when the stock market goes down? Don't get me wrong, you can make millions, even billions on Wall Street, but you've got to remember one simple rule. What goes up must come down. It's a wild ride, so let's check it out. Wall Street. Welcome to Wall Street, where big bucks are made and big bucks are lost. At one point, Microsoft's Bill Gates was making thousands of dollars an hour. Then in one day, he lost $12.1 But no money actually changed hands. It's all in the form of stock. Just what is stock? It's pieces of or shares in a company. Say a couple of guys start a company that we'll call Orange Blast. To raise money, they offer to sell stock in the company. The stock is $10 per share. You buy 100 shares. That's a $1,000 investment. Orange Blast becomes the new cool drink. It's very tasty. Making the stock hot. So within a few months, the share price rises to $18. If you sell now, you've already made $800. Then a freeze hits Florida, damaging the orange crop. This could hurt company profits, so... You tell your broker, who's like an agent, to sell. 
The broker contacts a specialist on the floor of the stock exchange where the sale is completed. But you're too late. Other stockholders also worry about the freeze, so they sell too, and Orange Blast stock loses its juice, diving to $7 per share. Now you have $700 left from your initial investment of $1,000, so you've lost $300. Plus, if you'd sold earlier, you could have made an $800 profit. Don't. Stock prices are driven by how many people are buying or selling. With all shopping, when something is in demand, like tickets to a concert, the price goes up. Stock prices go down when people stop buying or start selling. Then others get nervous and they sell too. Prices can go up and down. And you can even watch them change minute by minute. So you might be riding high one week, but there's no guarantee you won't be frozen out next week. Here's a great way to make big money. Make sure you have something the whole world wants, badly, and lots of it. Okay, most of us aren't lucky enough to be sitting on a gold mine, but the people of Brunei are sitting on something just as good, black gold, otherwise known as oil. To Bruneians, home is where the oil is. Home is where the oil is. Brunei may look like a modest little place, but its people have enjoyed some big time benefits. For decades, everyone in this tiny Asian country got cheap health care, free education, even free car loans, and nobody paid any taxes. The Sultan, who heads the government, took care of all that and more. In fact, once he flew his private jet to a fancy department store in London, bought the entire inventory and shipped it all home to his people as a holiday gift. Had this happened? Well, the lucky discovery of oil in 1929 turned Little Brunei into one of the richest countries on earth. Every day, Brunei pumps out nearly 200,000 barrels of oil. If the market price is 30 bucks a barrel, that comes out to $6 million a day. And with 365 days in a year, that's well over $2 billion a year. When oil prices went sky high in the 1970s, the Sultan became the richest man in the world with an estimated personal fortune of $25 billion. He built himself a $500 million palace, the biggest and most expensive home ever built. And when he partied, the Sultan spared no expense, whether it was his daughter's wedding, she's the one covered in diamonds, or his own 50th birthday party, which went on for two full weeks. But just when it seemed like Brunei's party would never end, the Sultan's brother, Prince Jeffrey, crashed it. As the Minister of Finance, Prince Jeffrey tore through $15 billion of Brunei's money with nobody seeming to notice. The Sultan had to auction off the Prince's purchases, everything from furniture and gold chandeliers to slabs of precious Italian marble. But the auction raised only $8 million, a fraction of the billions the Prince spent. Now Brunei is almost broke, and the next party is on hold. Here's a question. If I can barely find my keys on the bottom of my bag, how does someone find something buried on the bottom of the ocean? Well, it helps if that something could make you filthy rich. The people you're about to meet never gave up on their dream of finding sunken treasure, and it paid off big time. Let's meet the treasure hunters. Diving for treasure. Emeralds, gold, jewelry. Tons of this stuff is buried in the ocean. And all you have to do is find it, get filthy rich, and retire. Well, a few deep sea treasure hunters are actually living that dream thanks to special tools like scanners and high tech metal detectors and the will to spend years searching for the ultimate paycheck. Now, let's be clear. Most treasure hunters find only two things, frustration and disappointment. Day after day, nothing, nothing, nothing. But a lucky few have hit the jackpot. Like the crew that found about 20 million bucks in gold and jewels in a sunken 17th century Spanish galleon. 
or the team that uncovered the SS Central America, a ship that disappeared off the Carolina coast in 1857, carrying three tons of California Gold Rush treasures. The price tag in today's market? A cool one billion dollars. But the granddaddy of all treasure hunters is Mel Fisher, who never gave up his dream of finding the Atocha, a legendary Spanish ship that sank off the coast of Florida in 1622. For 16 years, Fisher and his crew followed a trail of clues across the ocean floor. First an anchor, then bronze cannons, then silver bars, that finally led to the mother load of all treasure ships. The Atocha was filled with more gold, silver, and emeralds than anyone imagined, and it's still yielding new treasures today. The total Atocha fortune is valued somewhere in the billions. Some people think no one has the right to own these historic buried treasures, but treasure hunting is a game of finders keepers. If it's in international waters and you claim it, it's yours. But first, you've got to find it. My Money Says, you completed this topic and you're ready for another. Go for it.